Hello guys, in this video, we will be discussing about finding the solution set of nonlinear equation. Now the first equation is actually a circle having a radius of 5 and the second equation is actually a linear equation meaning to say the highest exponent here is 1 and expect that the graph is in a form of a straight line. Now our main objective is to find the solution set. How to do that? In this case, we are going to find our solution set by substitution method. Now first thing to do is that we are going to manipulate the first equation, which is the linear equation, we are going to transpose negative y to the right. So this will become x is equal to y plus 1. Now at this point, our x is equal to y plus 1. And this is now the value that we are going to substitute on our x variable from the first equation. That's why this is called a substitution method because we are substituting. Now, since our x is equal to y plus 1, then this equation, x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, we are going to substitute x with y plus 1. What is our x? This is our x. So we have here y plus 1 squared plus y squared is equal to 25. Now multiplying y plus 1 by itself using the FOIL method, so we are going to expand, so this will become y squared plus 2y plus 1. This is the expanded figure of y plus 1 squared. And you have to continue writing y squared and then copying the right side, which is 25. Now here, take note that this is our first equation and second equation, and we are going to find the solution set. So from here, from this line, we are going to combine similar terms. So y squared plus y squared, since they are similar, then we are going to add, so this will become 2y squared, and then followed by 2y, and then followed by plus 1, and then we are going to transpose 25 to the left, and this will become negative 25, which is now equal to 0. Simplifying, this is now 2y squared plus 2y and then 1 minus 25 is negative 24, which is equal to 0. Now we have here the first term, the second term, and the third term. And the three terms are having a common, which is 2. Now let us try to factor it out. So how to factor? We are going to let 2 out from every term. Because 24 is understandable that this is 2 times 12, and we have here 2 times 1, and we have here 2 times 1. So let us have our continuation here, factoring out 2. So this is now y squared plus y minus 12 is equal to 0. So what we did from here to here is that we actually factored out 2. Now, basically, if you will try to distribute 2 to every term of our second function, which is enclosed by parentheses, 2 times y squared is 2y squared. 2 times y is positive 2y. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24, which is equal to 0. So basically, this one and this one are just the same. Now, we are going to divide both sides by 2 and also divide on the right side to maintain the balance or the equality. Then we're going to cancel that. So what's left, we have here 
y squared plus y minus 12 is equal to 0. Because 0 over 2 is just 0. Now, is this factorable? Yes. What are the factors of negative 12? The factors of negative 12 are negative 4 times 3. We have here 4 times negative 3. We have here 2 times negative 6. We have here negative 2 times 6. And then we have here negative 1 times 12. And we have here 1 times negative 12. Those are the factors. But then try to consider the middle numerical coefficient. This is 1. Understandable that we have 1 here. Now you have to consider that because this is actually sum and product of the roots. Now if you will try to multiply, the product is actually negative 12. But which of the 6 factors here, such that if you are going to get the sum, it will give a result of positive 1, which is the middle numerical coefficient. This is actually the second because 4 minus 3 is actually positive 1. So we are to take these factors. So positive 4. So we have here y plus 4. And then the other one is actually negative 3. So we have y minus 3, which is now equal to 0. These are the factors. So by zero factor property, you can actually split. So we have y plus 4 equals 0. And the other one would be y minus 3 is equal to 0. Let me erase this. So at this, this point, we can now solve for our y. So in solving for our y, this is now y is equal to negative 4 by transposing 4 to the right. And by transposing negative 3 to the right, this will become y is equal to positive 3. So we have values negative 4 and positive 3. Now from here, we are actually um, going to use these values to substitute from either of the two original equations to solve for our x. And this is what we're going to do. Now what if we are going to use the second um, equation which is x minus y squared x minus y equals 1 I'm sorry so if you're going to use that then we are going to erase the remaining So let's make use of the second equation x minus y is equal to 1. So first, if y is equal to negative 4, then all you have to do is to substitute y with negative 4. So from here, from this formula, we have here x minus negative 4 is equal to 1. So substituting y equals negative 4 to our second equation. So we have here x minus the quantity of negative 4 equals 1. Negative times negative, this is now x plus 4, which is equal to 1. Transposing 4 to the right, so this is now 1 minus 4. In short, x is equal to negative 3. So our first solution set is actually from negative 3 and negative 4. Now let's find uh, the second. If our y is equal to positive 3, that's coming from here, try to substitute from our second because this is our agreed equation to be substituted. So we have here x minus 3 is equal to 1. Then transposing negative 3 to the right, then this will become 1 plus 3. Then x is equal to positive 4. In short, we have another solution set. When x is 4, what is y? That is positive 3. And this is these are now our solution set. Now take note, 
In the systems of nonlinear equations, the solution set are just the points which are intersections of the two equations. Thanks for watching.